Welcome back. In this video, I'll solve this shell method example without the help of any computer graphing and show the steps in solving a shell method question. The problem is, use the shell method to compute the volume of the solid revolution obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals square root of x and y equals x cubed about the line y equals negative 1. This problem is actually a little bit on the hard side, but I'll show the steps on how this is done, and those steps will actually be the typical steps in solving all of these problems. First, I'm going to graph, draw a sketch of the graphs. y equals square root of x, it starts here and it goes like a sideways parabola like this y equals x cubed looks like this. I'm just going to draw this figure in here. They make this region. I'll also need to find the intersections. For these two equations, the intersections are here at 0, 0 and 1, 1. The next thing I need is the line y equals negative 1, which is down here. And this is the axis. That's step 1. All right, step 2. Something that I find very useful is to lightly sketch or sketch and erase the rotation. You may say, why would I do such a thing as sketch and erase it? Well, you want to see it so you have the image in your head of what the solid looks like. But the reason why I say either lightly sketch or then sketch and erase is because if you leave it in the picture, it's too much. The picture gets too busy. The axis is here. If I rotate this, I get this one. I rotate this, I get this one. And now I can visualize what the figure looks like. It looks like kind of a bracelet. Like a warrior bracelet in those ancient movies. Now that I know what it kind of looks like, I'm going to erase it. Step three. I'm going to mark a typical shell or rectangle in the region. The difference between the disk method and the shell method is that the disk method, each disk is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Whereas for the shell method, each shell is parallel to the axis of rotation. So I'm going to mark a typical shell or rectangle in the region parallel to the axis of rotation. And then I'm going to rotate that. But this time when I rotate, I leave it because I'm going to need that graph. Pro tip, make sure you mark the center when you draw the rotation. Okay, now that I've drawn this, I'm going to, based on this, be able to do two things. One is I can decide if this little thickness of the shell here is a dx or a dy. In this case, I can see that it's a little piece of the y-axis, so that makes it a dy. And then the second thing that I can decide is I can tell what is the radius of this rotation. Here's the radius of the rotation between this shell and the axis of the rotation. Well, the radius consists of what? From here to here is y. But the axis is at y equals negative 1, so you need to go from here to here, which is an extra distance of 1. Therefore, the radius r is equal to y plus 1. Another way to see that is that it is equal to distance between the y location here and the negative 1 location here. So the distance is y minus negative 1, which is y plus 1. Let's write it down. Step 5 is, based on the graph, determine two things. 
A is the integral of dx or dy your tiny little thickness is it dx or dy and B what is the radius of rotation once you have those you are ready to find the volume of this shell the shell looks like this if you open it up you have a rectangular box like that I tend to call this the height and this is the length and the length is equal to the circumference of the circle and then there's a thickness so the volume is equal to height times length times thickness which is height times circumference times thickness the thickness we already know is dy the circumference is 2 pi r the height is the difference between this point and that point and that means it's from the cubic curve minus the square root curve it's from the cubic curve y equals x cubed minus the square root curve y equals square root of x I usually don't write this on paper in real life I just think about it like that in my head here I'm writing it down so you can see my thinking I'm integrating with respect to y so I need to write these two curves in terms of y right now they are in terms of x I need to convert to functions of y y equals x cubed that means x equal to cube root of y I do the same thing with the other function y equals square root of x that means x is equal to y squared cube root of y minus y squared all right next piece is 2 pi r remember I figured out that r is y plus 1 so 2 pi times y plus 1 dy let's write down this step as step number 6 dv is equal to height times circumference times thickness and we're gonna usually figure these three things out in reverse order we figure out the thickness first the thickness is either dx or dy which I already figured out in step 5 The circumference is 2 pi r and the radius r I also figured it out in step 5 the height is either some fx minus g of x or some fy minus g of y based on whether or not we're doing the integral dx or dy I got dv then finally I'm going to go v is equal to integral from something to something of dv v is equal to integral from a to b of dv find the limits of integration find a b from the graph well look at the graph I'm integrating with respect to y so I'm looking along the y-axis the first shell the first rectangle is down here at y equals 0 the last rectangle is up here at y equals 1 therefore I'm filling in 0 down here and 1 up here and dv is equal to all of this dy once I'm here I'm home free all I have to do is do the integral first thing I'm gonna factor out the 2 pi what's left are just powers of y this is a power of y these are all powers of y I'm gonna write them as powers instead of cube root I'm gonna write y to the one third now foil this expand the product 
y to one third times y is y to the four third. y squared times y is y cubed. y to the one third times one. y squared times one dy. I integrate each term. And all this from 0 to 1 equals 2 pi times. If I plug in 1, I get 1 over 7 third minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 third minus 1 over 3. When I plug in 0, I get all 0, so it's just minus a big 0. All of this, I simplify and it's equal to 25 over 42. And the whole thing times 2 pi. So the final answer is 25 pi over 21 unit cube. All right, let's summarize the steps. <clears throat> Step one, sketch the graphs, find the region, find the intersections. Step two, lightly sketch or sketch and erase the rotation. Step three, Mark a typical shell parallel to the axis of rotation. Step four, rotate it, rotate the shell. Mark the center. Step five, based on the graph, determine A, is it the X or the Y? B, what is the radius of rotation? Step six, write the volume of one shell. DV is equal to height times circumference times the thickness. Where? A, the thickness is either the x or the y. B, the circumference is 2 pi r, which you already figured out in step 5. And C, the height is either fx minus gx or fy minus gy based on whether you're integrating with respect to dx or dy. Step 7 is to write the volume v is the integral from a to b of dv, and you find a, b by going along the direction of either dx or dy. And that's it. You're basically done. Step 8, do the integral. Alright, hope that helps. Any questions or comments, put it in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. And thanks for watching. Bye.